don't. So it's probably no big news to any fan of Power Rangers and Super Sentai that there is a bit of a mystery for which Sentai season is going to become Power Rangers 2019. Some may think it's Tokyuger, while others may think it's Juoger. In this video, I'm going to talk about which season I think is going to get adapted. For starters, I'm going to narrow it down to Juoger and Q Ranger. While there is a chance Go Busters and Tokyuger may still be adapted, they have already been skipped over. This most likely means that Saban will not be coming back to them. Because if these seasons were already skipped because they couldn't be used, what is the point in coming back to them? So, Q Ranger and Juoger, which will get adapted. I have not seen Juoger, but does that matter at all when the American season could take a completely different route? No, not really. So we're going to start with Juoger since it came first. I'm going to really be covering what most collectors would purchase from a Power Rangers line, because there are too many products that are mostly aimed at children. Juoger was very lackluster when it came to gimmicks. All the sounds were pre-programmed into the morpher for all the toys with no collectible gimmick. However, this can make for more show accurate morphers with higher prices. There are four morphers that would get released during the show's run, and with each at $35 to $40 because of a better look, about $160 are made from them. The Zords for Juoger could also work really well in America. Since kids here have a certain obsession with cubes, there's a good chance a lot of them could be bought. We could have four Megazord sets total. Juo King, Juo Wild, Tosai Juo, and Dodakayo. Each priced at $35, a standard Megazord price. Sprinkled throughout are the tiny Auxiliary Zords, most likely priced at 10 each or in a 2-pack together. Then there's Cube Octopus and Cube Condor at 15 each as well since they're a little larger. Of course, with the replays, there are many possible Zords, but I'm just thinking about the normal ones. That leaves us with about $210 on Zords. On to the figures. Naturally, we can start off with 5 figures, one for each Ranger. Then of course, we get the obligatory Megazord mode, bringing up to 10 figures. Then there's the upgrade form for the Red Ranger, and the 6th Ranger, adding 2 more figures. If they both get their own Megazord mode as well, 2 more figures. Then there's Jewel Bird and Whale, 2 standard figures, 2 Megazord figures, plus 4 figures overall. That leaves at least 18 figures to be made over the course of the series, not including Super Megazord modes, villains, and other figures. With each figure priced at $10, $180 is made from the figures overall. Now, let's add up the total cost of the items I just covered. $160 plus $210 plus $180 plus another $180 for miscellaneous weapons, bikes, and figures that aren't completely targeted at kids. That leaves us with a grand total of $730 spent on a collector's basic essentials. And that's not even counting very childish products made for, well, children. Now, let's go take a look at Q-Ranger. Q-Ranger, unlike Juoger, does sport a gimmick in the form of the Q-Tama. We currently only know of four Morphers in Q-Ranger, and with each at $35, that's $140 from Morphers. Now, the Q-Tama. We know of at least 88 Q-Tama that will be released in Japan for Q-Ranger. Yes, 88. We can only imagine what this will be in America. Cut this in half for two-pack releases at $8 each, $352. Oh yes, that's not even counting repaint or special Qtama. Anyway, on to Zords. 12 Rangers, at least 12 Zords getting released. Qreno, Ryuteo, Gigant ho -Oh, and Uriah and Battler are all $35 Megazord sets. And then the remaining 4 Zords at $17 each is $242. The reason this is so big, however, is because 9 of the Zords will be released right at the series start, with the others sprinkled throughout. The action figures are going to be another important thing here. 12 Rangers, with the obligatory cockpit mode, equals 24 figures. Add on the 4 upgrades to the Red Ranger and the Silver Ranger upgrade, and you've got 30 figures at $10 each, once again not counting villains and Super Megazord mode. The prices for Q-Ranger are $140, $352, $242, $300, and another $180 for miscellaneous items. 
that equals a thousand one hundred and ninety four dollars that's a whole lot of money that could be spent obviously this means that Q-Ranger has a lot more money that can be made from his toy line than Drew Odrew. This means a bigger budget and most likely a better show. So, Q-Ranger vs. Drew Odrew, Q-Ranger wins in adapting Power Rangers 2019. But that's just my opinion, and I've shown a lot of facts. But what's your opinion? What do you think will get adapted? Show me in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you for watching.